Hey everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today I've got another news story to share with you, and this is a featured article from sciencenews.org about a jellyfish cousin, um, so that's a, a type of cnidarian, that may survive without working mitochondria, which is a pretty big deal to say for a multicellular eukaryote. So basically what's going on here is we've got this multicellular eukaryote. Remember, eukaryote means that they have membrane-bound organelles. Typically, that includes a mitochondria. This would be a first uh, to find one that is a eukaryotic cell without working mitochondria, and it's multicellular. So multiple cells make up this parasite. And so it's called Hinaguya salmonicola, and it's a parasite. So it's not a free-living eukaryote. It has a parasitic life cycle. It goes back and forth in its life cycle between um, salmon and worms. So it has different parts of its life cycle that it completes in each of those hosts. It needs, needs to be able to parasitize uh, both of those hosts in order to complete its life cycle. And it, it's really noteworthy because this would be the first example of a multicellular eukaryote that has gotten rid of its mitochondrial genome. So it has no working mitochondria. It still has some mitochondria-like structures that can be seen with a microscope, but they aren't carrying out aerobic respiration, most likely because they don't have a genome. So if you need kind of a reminder, mitochondria are the organelles in uh, eukaryotes that produce ATP. So they break down carbohydrates, glucose primarily, uh, and break it down, and it's a complex process called aerobic respiration, but the gist of it is that it makes ATP, which is the cellular current energy currency, so like the, the molecule that's used for easy energy in the cell. I have a link to a video on aerobic respiration that I filmed a while ago, and I'll put that in the video description if you want to see more about what that aerobic respiration process entails. But as for this news article, which will also have a link in the video description, you might say, well, why is this important? It's really cool because about 2 billion years ago is when eukaryotes got their start. There was an ancestor of all eukaryotic cells. Remember, eukaryotes includes all plants, all animals, uh, all fungi, um, lots of unicellular and multicellular eukaryotes. And so the ancestor of all of these different organisms engulfed a bacterium and sort of embarked on this mutually beneficial or mutualistic relationship where the um, ancestral eukaryotic cell engulfed this other bacterium. It provided this bacterium with sort of energy and protection and a place to hang out. And this bacterium was capable of aerobic respiration and provided lots of energy to the cell that engulfed it. And so over a very long period of time, this mutualistic sort of symbiosis uh, eventually resulted in this evolution to mitochondria inside a eukaryotic cell. And so the mitochondria, um, like chloroplast, which is a, another type of um, organelle in photosynthetic organisms, it has its own genome. And that's because it is descended from this bacterium that was engulfed about two billion years ago. And so its genome is separate from the organism's DNA. And this is so, so separate from the organism's DNA that's housed inside the nucleus of that organism. So you've got the mitochondrial genome that's in the mitochondria. And so there are a few single-celled or unicellular eukaryotes that have gotten rid of uh, their mitochondrial genome, but this would be the first example of a multicellular eukaryote that's done the same thing. Um, so you might be asking what happened to that mitochondrial genome and why? Well, remember because it's a parasite, it is living and reproducing inside these worms and salmon. And so the thought is that it can rely on its hosts, not just for shelter, but also for energy. So it can just take the ATP that's being used by the worm and the salmon in order to complete its reproduction and other sort of metabolic needs. And so this would have allowed it to shed this cumbersome mitochondrial DNA. The reason I say it's cumbersome is because every single time a cell divides, it has to replicate its, its DNA before it can divide. And that includes both the nuclear DNA and the mitochondrial DNA. And it takes time and it takes energy and it takes materials to be able to do that. So if a cell gets rid of its mitochondrial genome, like all of the DNA in the mitochondria, it just doesn't have 
to take the time and the energy and the resources to replicate that anymore. And so it looks like uh, an ancestor of this parasitic cnidarian, a cnidarian, remember, is the, the phylum of animals that includes jellyfish, coral, sea anemones. So it, it falls into that group. Um, that's why the article calls it a cousin of jellyfish. So this parasitic cnidarian, um, because it's just begun re relying on its hosts for all of its energy, it's gotten rid of this mitochondrial genome. It stopped um, stopped replicating it however many generations ago. I don't think it's been established maybe yet how long it's been without its mitochondrial um, genome, but that has probably helped it to save energy, help it to save time, it can replicate a little bit faster, and therefore maybe give it a leg up over competing, um, you know, other competing species. And so this is just really cool. This is the first time we've ever had a multicellular animal that does not um, have a mitochondrial cell, or, sorry, does not have a mitochondria in its, in its cells. And, um, I also have another video that I'll put in the video description on the endosymbiotic theory. This is a major biological concept. It's sort of broadly accepted this idea that a, an ancestral eukaryote engulfed a bacterium that eventually evolved into a mitochondria. And then, um, one of the descendants of that original ancestral eukaryote also engulfed another bacterium that eventually became the chloroplast, and that's where we get um, the photosynthetic lineages, um, so plants and um, photosynthetic, photosynthetic algae and so forth. So if you're interested in learning more about the endosymbiotic theory, I'll have a video about that as well. But I think that is it for today. Let me know what you think about the news story uh, and what you think about um, some of these topics with the endosymbiotic theory, aerobic respiration, evolution of animals. I think they're all really interesting and I'd like to know what you have to say. So that's it for today and thanks for watching. Bye.